Hey, tonight I wanted to do a little video called The Sons of God. Who are the sons of God? Romans 8.14 teaches that the sons of God are men that are led of the Spirit of God. And nothing more. Just like Jesus Christ told his disciples on earth, I am here to do the will of my Father, to do the Father's will. And this is at the essence of the true Christian life, the true disciple, the true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. In spirit, they are sons of God who are led of the Spirit of God. And this means simply that if you were elect of God for the elect's sake, if you are elect of God toward salvation, he will bring you in to sonship or daughtership into his kingdom. But what we must have to learn how to do is to be obedient, to move, abide. I'm the vine, you're the branches. Jesus said, if you abide in me, I abide in you. Um, so it's simply abiding and listening and learning to listen to the Lord. And of course, he engineers situations in our lives, particularly in my life, uh, where he teaches us to be able to hear him, to be able to recognize his leadings and his voice within us um, sometimes. And this is a spiritual thing. And the problem is that only the sons or daughters of God are able to do this. People who really do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Savior um, don't have the power to do this. The scripture speaks of um, many will have, in the end days many will have a form of godliness but not the power thereof. Well the reason they don't have the power thereof is because they're not spiritually connected and unless they're just children and they and in the case that they're children they have to learn to grow and walk and recognize the Lord's voice in their life now ministers and you have you know the you have the uh, apostle the prophet the pastor the teacher the evangelist the fivefold ministry of God these are all things of speaking in different ways the word of God the Word of God is simply the Holy Spirit speaking to you and you conveying um, those thoughts to another. And of course this takes some growth to be able to discern the spirits, which the Bible talks about it also teaches us in 1 John 4, we are to discern just who our brothers and sisters are in Christ. This is all spiritual. This is all discernment. This is all a living organism of the Holy Spirit within us that we have to learn to recognize and to understand and grow in. And of course, this is all done by grace. By grace we are saved that none may boast. Also, um, <clears throat> The scripture teaches us that he uh, reveals the things of God to the lowly in spirit. The, you know, seek the low place and the Lord will rise you up, um, raise you up. Um, all these things are teaching us how to hear the Lord, how to seek the Lord and hear the Lord. And this is what God Almighty wants for his children. He wants to have a personal relationship with us. He wants us to be able to move and function in him each and every day. And the counterfeit to this is the Western mind, the intellect, academics, academia. Okay, we have the Bible, which are only written, the Bible is only written to the Lord's people, people that he has by grace saved uh, unto himself for salvation. It's not written to the whole world to pour through and create seminaries and have intellectual battles 
you know, that started uh, with Constantine, for instance, about, okay, what's orthodoxy and what's not orthodoxy, because that's all the in our human understanding. Now, when we read the scriptures, the scripture teaches that, we'll be, that they will be taught of God. That means only the Holy Spirit, the sermon of the Holy Spirit, when you read the Holy Scriptures, is going to give you um, the deeper meanings. It's going to enlighten you uh, to 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 the, what the Lord's trying to speak to you. It's going to um, make clear maybe things that have happened to you in your path, in your past. Excuse me, having a hard time tonight. Um, but the lights come on and you go, oh, I got it, I understand. That's all a spiritual thing. Seminaries and school books, on the other hand, um, use the mind to say, memorize this and know this verse and know that verse. And, um, you know, uh, study your theology, study your history. You know, be sharp. Be able to have an answer when somebody... Uh, comes to you with a question. But this is all natural ability. This is all power of the flesh, of the intellect. Now there's nothing wrong with using your mind and the scripture teaches us to study to show yourself approved, but you study only prayerfully if you are the Lord's. The problem is this, the, the world church, the false church, quite frankly, has gone out and taught scripture the people who are not the Lord's. They may have, they may get close in their theology to different understandings of, about God and the creation order and godly authority and that um, in their intellectual understanding, but they're not going to have it spiritually if simply if they are not the Lord's. And to be the Lord's, especially to have a ministry of sorts, be able to speak the word of God to somebody. And it will, of course, always be in accordance with the scripture because the scripture is written to God's people. But again, the problem is people who are not God's people are taught the scripture. And this is why there's so much confusion, so many false prophets, so many people uh, um, that become dependent on pasty or church. Oh, forsake not the gathering together. Or, or, or actually, it's forsake not the assembly. Well, in an assembly, just like an engineer does, you assemble it according to plan. And the only engineer that we have that does that is God Himself. So therefore, you got to be able to hear Him move and function in Him. We don't go off and make schools and ministries. Oh, this is my vision. This is my ministry. Oh, everybody, uh, Put their money in the plate towards this. God told me this. God told me that. Now, the question is, are you listening? Do you hear him? Is he telling you to put money in that plate? Is he speaking through you? You know, I couldn't understand it. I'd go into churches, and uh, I won't use any names, but I remember the pastor told me, Roll, and, uh, I'm going to let you join this church, but uh, I don't want to go, Roll, what are you telling people? Because he wanted to be the boss. He's the spiritual authority, don't you know? And, and I thought, why is this man worried about what I would say to people in the church? I mean, doesn't everybody have opinions about the Bible? And, and, and don't everybody have scriptural um, insights they like to share? Why is this man particularly worried about me joining his church? And now I understand it. It's because I have the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ within me. And he could see it. And it made him uncomfortable. Okay? And uh, I'm really not trying to uh, lamb bless the church, so to speak, because I think that the Lord has used the church and people within the church structure, uh, you know, systematic theologies for a while, but it's not exactly what he wants. No, he wants sons of God who are led of the Spirit of God, who can move, function in him one-on-one, -on -one, uh, without having an organization get in or an agenda. Uh, <clears throat> this is what we do, and this is what, you know, this is what they do, and this is how we believe. This is how the, God doesn't want that. God wants sons that can actually hear, move, and function in him. And an elder, dear friends, 
is simply a man, okay, the husband of one wife, and that doesn't mean even if you were divorced, it means that you don't have more than one wife. Okay, that's that's mistaught in churches also uh, for deacon and elders. But but an elder is simply somebody who can move, function, and hear and understand um, the Lord Jesus Christ. He has the experience of life in his life of moving and functioning in the Lord, and can encourage others to do the same. And uh, of course the manual that we use, the technical manual, if you will, is the Bible. But if you don't have the car, if you don't have the experience, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, the Bible is of no use to you, except maybe for moral living, which this country certainly in the past has been morally blessed because they honored, they were God honoring in the precepts that um, Western civilization um, pretty much laid down for the world. But I'm talking about actual sons and daughters of God, people who can move and function in Him. And I'm going to tell you, you cannot be a true minister unless you can hear, function, and move in the Lord. And that, my friends, is a place of total and utter dependency upon the Lord. And He uses broken and contrite people, broken vessels, to do his work. And I'm sorry, but most of these church people are career oriented. I have a tuition to pay off. I went to seminary. I, you know, that they've been well trained and usually they're very well spoken. And people say, oh, wasn't that wonderful? But you know what? That can all be natural ability in the flesh. No, God wants sons of God, people who, who are led and can move in the Spirit of God. And now I'm starting to stand, understand, like Jesus said, if they reject me, they will reject you also. And I can look back, I'm over 50 years old now, and I can understand now by the organization that named his name, the church, really didn't want me around. Because it's not me that they don't want around. It's the Spirit of Christ in me that they don't want around. It might make waves. It might stir people up. Things might happen. All right? And especially in your conservative churches, your formal churches, oh, my Lord, it's all about tradition. We don't want to rock the boat. But I'm telling you that you can hear the Lord Jesus Christ and you can function in the Lord Jesus Christ only if you're His. And you have to seek the low place. You have to be broken and brought to the point where um, you are willing to hear. And most people are not willing to pay the price in the world, either for prestige, money, uh, just to get along with people. Because after all, nobody wants to be hated as Christ was hated. But brothers and sisters, that's exactly what you got. If you get along with the world, if Everybody thinks, you know, you're a wonderful person and, uh, uh, you know, they feel comfortable around you. You don't make them feel uncomfortable because the truth of God is a two-edged sword. It would make people feel uncomfortable. And I'm telling you, if you have the Spirit of God, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know when, you know, maybe somebody's uh, given a sermon in a church in the past, and they started to go down a road that the pastor didn't want them to go down to, what, what happens? They get cut off. <clears throat> well, thank you, but let's, uh, let's uh, focus on this now, or let's focus on that. And if somebody's um, led of the Spirit and speaking in the Spirit, that's the first thing that happens is the people that are of a different spirit will cut them off at the knees. And this is what Jesus said experience and the disciples so just remember to be a minister you have to be able to hear God to be a disciple someone you have to know them and be willing to follow them and most people are not I'm sorry that's a general statement and it's also a general truth most people are not even the ones that claim his name and uh, put on the fine linens and garments um, 
They may be religious. They may have a form of godliness, but unless they hear, move, and are willing to function and be obedient to the Lord within them, they have no power. They are dead. Abide in me and, you know, abide in the vine, Jesus says. If you abide in me, I abide in you. And that's where the power comes in. And if you don't, you're pruned. And if you still don't, you're cut off and you're burnt. And this backslider's doctrine of uh, once saved, always saved, I'm sorry, but it's wrong. It's wrong. I know because I know the Lord. I know the Lord that well. And I've grown in that despite I was in church leadership and taught about tulip and, you know, all that type of thing. But it's wrong. It's wrong. You're only sons of God who are led, continually led, and move forward by the Spirit of God. Now, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us, okay? But it doesn't mean that we just uh, say, well, I got Jesus, so now I can just, um, if something makes me uncomfortable that he's telling me to do, I don't have to listen. No. It really gets down to being able to listen, move, and function in the Holy Spirit. That is your salvation. That is your salvation. Now, of course, nobody can snatch them out of my hands. The scripture teaches us all that the Father has given me. No one can snatch them out of my hands. That's right. Nobody can snatch them out of their hands. But we're not a, but we're, you know, the Apostle Paul said he was a slave to Christ. He was a bond servant. He made himself a slave that because he knew that he, uh, there's a possibility that he would not finish the race. He strived to finish the race, fight the good fight. These are all talking about spiritual things. These are not theological or intellectual things. Like, I don't know, like many great theologians uh, use from the power of their mind. God could care less about the power of their mind. God wants obedience, not sacrifice. Obedience. It's not, look what we did for you today, Jesus. Oh, we're praising you. We're all going to church. And we're doing all these things for you. Bless us. No, God wants obedience. God wants people to listen to him. And the problem is most people either cannot hear him or don't want to listen. They'd rather play church. Well, narrow is the way that leads to life. And few that it will be that find it. Many will strive to enter. Many. And they won't make it. Why? Because you have that spiritual life now if you choose to move, listen, and be obedient to the Lord in the Spirit if you indeed have the Holy Spirit. The problem is people that don't even have the Holy Spirit have never been born again. They, they claim to be ministers. And all they are is antichrist, alternative Christ. Listen to me, they say. You know, and... They don't like Christians, the spirit of a, of a true Christian, because you have something they don't have. It's alien to them. And you're never going to teach them through the intellect. You cannot teach people Christ through the intellect. It is a relationship of God spiritually. Well, I may have been a little long-winded on this one tonight. I haven't done a video in a while, and uh, I just wanted to to uh, emphasize only a minister can hear and is obedient to God. Otherwise, there's no power in it. It has something to do with seminary. And it specifically says they are sons of God who are led of the Spirit of God because men, okay, are spiritual authorities. Women are helpmeets. That's how they were created to be. And... I, I have just said that, you know, we're supposed to be humble and meek. And so we can hear the Lord the way the Lord is down. And people that want to do something for Jesus are doing it in their own flesh. And that's not humble and meek. Okay? That's a pride thing or what a religious thing or whatever. Some people may be misled. But God gives authority to men in ministry, not women. And, uh... You know, people talk about, well, Deborah, you know, God used Deborah. 
these different women in the scriptures, but <clears throat> that's just because they were in the right place and listened to the Lord. Doesn't necessarily that mean it doesn't mean that no, excuse me, doesn't mean they were given a ministry. It just meant that they could be obedient and move also. No, the men have been given ministry. Okay. It's it's a function of the male to be a minister, not a female. All right. God bless. Bye.